with us today. As you can see, we're going to revisit uh, 18th century packs for the trail today. Uh, a couple of them, the tump line and the snap sack, we've already covered, but I'm going to cover them in a little bit different fashion, along with some other ones that I have here today. Uh, each one of the versions that we have here today was common for the 18th century. As I already said in a previous video, we covered the tump line type pack, uh, the snap sack, and then we have these two additions here on the end. This is a standard knapsack of the 18th century. Uh, relatively small in shape and style. A couple of uh, buckles and leather straps with a shoulder strap across the center. This one's cut and been based on one from around the Revolutionary War period. So standard uh, knapsack there. This one here is the uh, famous new invention pattern knapsack or pattern 1776 so we're going to go into a little detail about that and sort of the way I'm going to run this today is I went through a test with each one of these packs and what I did is I loaded each one with about six and a half pounds of gear and I took it into the woods on a mile long hike to see uh, how comfortable they were how, how easy they were to pack and uh, again how easy they are to construct and I kind of came up with a little rating system to maybe give you some information on uh, how to make a good informed decision if you're wanting to uh, you know start carrying one of these types or give you a little information if you're wanting to make one or have one made and uh, the point system that I used is a five star rating system so for each plus it would get a star and the overall highest score in my opinion uh, will be revealed at the end and uh, will kind of uh, shed some light on perhaps which is the most effective pack. There's no perfect one here. Uh, they all have advantages and disadvantages and you kind of have to weigh the pros with the cons and you kind of need to ask yourself before you uh, decide to make one or purchase one is what are you going to be doing? Are you planning to do hunting or maybe you're not moving around that much? Uh, are you planning to do a lot of hiking and camping? Uh, is it only going to be used for reenactment use? In other words, you're going to throw the pack on at your car and you know hike just a short distance into your camp? Because you need to consider those things when you're making a choice because all of them are strong in certain areas and weak in others. So, uh, the very first one that I did is the tump line type. And uh, what I did with this one is I took, now this doesn't have anything in it, this is just the blanket, but I took the tump line pack and I loaded the six and a half pounds worth of gear inside of here. And I just put everything in there that I typically would use, plus a few more items just to add for weight to uh, simulate, you know, if I had like food gear pack. So took this one, headed into the woods, and it's fairly uh, rough terrain. There's hills, there's logs, the whole nine yards, and I went on about a mile long hike with this. So the rating system that I came up with is the first one, uh, first issue here is ease of manufacture, how easy the pack is to manufacture or have made for you. And the tump line I gave it a five star rating. Obviously there's practically nothing to it. Um, if you've got something you can use for the strap and the end ties you can make this pack. So it gets five stars right out of the gate very simple, very easy, or if you're going to purchase this from a maker, uh, relatively low expense in that. Uh, the second thing that I reviewed on it was and took note of is the, uh, the comfort, how comfort, comfortable it is to carry. It actually surprised me. I found this to be, as far as uh, a pack, you know, all your gear in there, relatively uncomfortable. Um, I tried it both across my chest and slung over my shoulder both ways and I kind of felt like the joints on my shoulder were getting pressured and stressed so it's not that it was unbearable it was just I was surprised not as comfortable as I thought it would be so I only gave it uh, two stars in the comfort department. Um, the next area that I raided the pack on was uh, gear access. How easy it is to access the gear in here and the one drawback of this above all others is obviously 
If you want to access your equipment in there, you have to stop, completely unroll it. You know, that's something to factor into if it's raining or it's snowing or something like that. So for that, uh, I gave it a pretty low rating, only one star in that department for that reason. So uh, if you want, you know, simple, uh, lightweight as far as, you know, what you're going to use to pack it, I would rate this relatively high. But the, for the other reasons, this one rated fairly low on the list. So um, overall, I gave it an eight star rating, which I'll tell you which one won here in a little while. So not a horrible one, but not the best choice in my opinion. The next one that I rated, and again I loaded them all up with the same amount of gear and accoutrements, six and a half pounds, was the snap sack. Now we've gone into detail about this pack before, so I won't repeat that. And uh, ease of manufacture, this is pretty easy to make. You can make them fancy if you want to. Uh, this one is relatively plain. It's double layered material with the shoulder strap and buckle and as far as manufacture goes pretty easy to produce and also cost wise fairly cost efficient they're not a fortune to have made or if you want to make one yourself so I gave that one uh, four stars on the comfort level pretty good although not perfect again uh, you know you've got the, sh the weight bearing down on your shoulders this is a single strap here in the way that you typically wear these but how it hung on my back, it was more comfortable than the tump line. I gave it four stars on the comfort uh, rating. Um, as far as accessing the gear um, with a snap sack, it's so-so. And the reason is, is because you can see it's elongated. So if you've got stuff on the bottom and everything stacked on top, it's going to be a little hard to access it. So I gave that three and a half stars for a uh, overall rating of eleven and a half stars on this one. Moving on to the uh, standard knapsack, and again, this one has been patterned after original from the American Revolution. Uh, ease of manufacture, this is a lot more involved to make, so I only gave it two stars because you've not only got to do a lot of sewing, you've got buttonholes that you have to cut out, sew and reinforce, you've got uh, leather strapping here, you've got three buckles that you either have to make or buy. So for ease of manufacture, this only got two stars. You're going to pay more money for this if you have to have it made, and you're going to have a lot more time in this uh, if you're going to make it yourself. As far as comfort, this was very comfortable to carry. Um, with the two straps and being a relatively small size, it hung very well on my back. I didn't have uh, a lot of noticeable shoulder pressure on this. Um, I did notice a little bit of pressure digging into my chest right here with the center strap, but it wasn't unbearable by any means, and you can adjust that to make that comfortable. And uh, so for that reason, four and a half stars on the comfort. Um, as far as gear accessibility, I also gave this uh, four and a half stars because, you know, obviously you just undo the three buttons and you can get right in there and get whatever you need. So uh, overall rating on this was 11 stars. I was I was pretty happy with this style of pack. Uh, so a good one to carry if uh, that appeals to you, or it's within your uh, you know regimental or unit guidelines. The last one on the list is the new invention haversack slash knapsack, or as it's become to be known, the pattern 76. And this one is rather notorious with uh, reenactors for being very uncomfortable. And the reason it is, typically it has a very, uh, very narrow shoulder strap. Um, so what I did is I actually found the blueprint of the original. If you go online and search for it, you can find it. I don't have it with me right now. But uh, in the blueprint, the only measurements that it gives are the approximate width and length of the pack. Um, you can see that a shoulder strap is sketched, but on the original it doesn't state what it's made of or how wide it is. So if you have that going on, you have a little bit of leeway there or can take a little bit of a creative initiative. So what I did on this pack is typically the strap on a lot of the reproductions is fairly narrow. I uh, beat this one up to nearly two inches so that to help displace the weight. 
So, uh, starting out on our rating system here, ease of manufacture, this pack um, is fairly difficult to reproduce. It's got a lot of layers, it's got a gusset sewn in there, it has a special little compartment in there. We have four leather straps, buckles that have to be made or purchased. So for ease of manufacture, you're going to have um, some time in it. It takes a while to produce this, or it's going to be um, relatively expensive if you want to have someone else make it. A lot of times uh, you see the flaps on these treated or painted for waterproofing, uh, but sometimes not. This one has not been uh, treated. All these packs have been made out of that fustin material, a mix of cotton and linen and then lined with linen, so you've got the uh, two layers for strength there. But uh, again, difficult to manufacture, so I gave it a one star rating on ease of manufacture. As far as the uh, comfort goes, it was uh, fairly comfortable, a lot more so than I thought it was going to be. And one thing about this pack that the others don't share is you can actually, well, I guess with the exception of this one, but that's not actually a pack, you can put a blanket in here. There's, I have a blanket in here right now. Um, you can pack them in there a couple of different ways. You can put them in the main compartment or put them under the flap. And so the one advantage of this is, is it holds everything it's going to hold all your accoutrements and your blanket. So that is a plus if you want to, uh, you know, have bare minimum involved with your pack. Um, the, uh, the wide open strap there slung over my shoulder I did like. It didn't feel constricting at all. I had a lot of freedom of movement. But because of all of the extra weight in there, it is noticeably heavy on your shoulder. Now, the wider shoulder strap really did help in that department. It wasn't, um, by the end of the mile hike, you know, it had all kind of, I had all kind of pain and discomfort. It was uh, relatively comfortable. Not the best, but not bad. I gave it three and a half stars on the comfort level. Um, as far as gear accessibility, it's pretty easy to get into. The only thing that you have to do is loosen these three buckles and you can get right in there. There's a, a slit in the inside of the flap where you can store more gear. It's very secure. So for that reason I gave it uh, four and a half stars. So our winner after that evaluation, well I'll start with fourth place. Our uh, fourth place goes to this guy here. Again, very simple, very easy to make, but for all the other reasons uh, a little lower on the totem pole for uh, the award. Uh, with the third place, I gave the New Invention Knapsack. It's better than the uh, Tump Line, but it has its drawbacks too, so I gave that uh, third place. Second place went to the uh, Knapsack, and uh, our winner is the Tried and True Knapsack. I found this one, for all the reasons stated, to be the best. It got 11.5 stars to take the win. Uh, the knapsack got 11, the new invention got 9, and this guy down here got 8. So this is would be my preferred choice as far as ease of manufacture, comfort, uh, and accessibility to your equipment. It's a good choice for the common man or soldier, civilian, Native American. There are a lot of different versions of these in the 18th century, and uh, it's still a good choice for today. So once again, thank you for tuning in with us today. On our next video, we're planning to cover the first pattern, Brown Best Musket, both uh, showing you all the details about our manufacturing that goes into them, and we're actually going to shoot it in an upcoming video there, so you'll want to be sure to tune into that. So once again, thank you for tuning in.